Hello and welcome back. My name is Michael Raziel. This is Waiting for Tokyo, and I have the absolutely incredible, amazing Monica Abbott with me. Um, Monica is on USA Softball and was on the last 2008 uh, team. And so it's been a little while, but Monica's still here with us. Monica, if you don't mind telling uh, everybody out there a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Monica Abbott, and um, I'm a 2020 one <laughs> Olympic uh, hopeful and um, competitor. I play softball. I'm a pitcher. I'm 6'3", and I'm basically known for throwing the ball really fast. I can throw up to 75 miles per hour consistently. And I went to the university. I went to the University of Tennessee. I've been. I hold records in NCAA wins and strikeouts, and I've been playing professionally since 2007. And yeah, I've been playing professionally for a long time and um, was a 2008 Olympian and then now back with the team um, for 2020 and 2021 Olympic Games. But really excited to be here and obviously just share part of my story and part of my career and um, what the Olympic postponement is and um, how all these athletes are dealing with it. And it's it's a it's it's a crazy situation. Obviously, everything that's going on in the world when it happened, it is unfortunate. But let's let's take a step back a second. So as you said, you were on the the 2008 team. We won the silver medal. We the United States won the silver medal there. Softball was then taken mm -hmm. out of the Olympics for 2012 and 2016. It now comes back to Japan. Softball is a huge sport there. Right. We were able to get softball back in the Olympics. And Team USA already qualified. You guys qualified a long time ago, it feels like, in, you know, back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been forever, it feels <laughs> like. What was it like when you finally, you know, got back to qualifying, you know, almost, you know, 10 years later after you were in the Olympics the first time? Yeah, so I, I feel like almost our qualifier was like so long ago. And, and it was such a big deal. We qualified in actually 2018 at our world championship uh, games there. So every every four years, there's a world championship. It's two years after the Olympic Games. And we played Japan in the final. There was only one, one qualifier. One team would qualify out of that. And since Japan was our obviously, you know, the host country, they're, all their teams are qualified. So I ended, we ended up playing them to win and was like walk off inning, so much drama, just like home runs, big strikeouts, diving plays, all of it. And it, it we ended in like the 11th, I think on a walk off, on a walk off single. Um, and it was pretty incredible. And that's how we ended up qualifying uh, for the Tokyo 2020 games. How much sweeter did it make it considering it was one of your first professional years you make the Olympics and now 12 years later, you get the opportunity again to potentially play in the games. Yeah, totally. Um, in 2008 Olympic Games, I was the youngest player on the team. I was just like the young buck that could just throw the ball pretty hard. Um, everyone was older than me. Everyone had a lot of professional experience. And then, and then we got we had gotten voted out um, for the 20, 2012 Games in London at the time. And we had already known that going into the 2008 games, but we were, you know, bidding to try to get in 2016. We were over and over, we were trying to like appeal the 2012 process, all of this stuff. And we kept being like, gosh, we've got to get back into the games. We've got to get back into the games. And, um, you know, Japan is such a baseball softball country. It's a very popular sport over there. And so we felt really, really confident that we would have a chance, a chance to to be in the game. So softball was asked to be back in the, back in the games in Tokyo as a bid sport. The, honestly, the enthusiasm across the country, across the US and even across the world for softball has improved so much just because we're on the world stage now. Yes. What was it then like hearing that you had to postpone this incredible opportunity in extra year because of everything that's <laughs> happening around the world? Oh man, it was... <laughs> So the U.S. team, so we qual our team was named in October. We had Olympic tryouts in October. And then we started preparing um, at camps through, throughout uh, the winter. And then what we do is we go on tour. The U.S. team goes on tour. And we play a lot of the top college teams and professional teams and just 
just all-star teams trying to get games in and to be able to just train as a team. So we had already started our tour in late January to play some of the bigger colleges, like your UCLA's, your Tennessee's, your, your Alabama's, your Washington's to play them um, in February and March. And so we were actually on tour in, in full swing of training as a team together when COVID hit. And obviously we got sent home after basketball, after the NBA canceled. And then there was just like this domino effect of sports and you could kind of feel it in the air. You could feel the tension, like what's going to happen with the Olympics because we, I was home. I think all of us softball players, we were home for maybe like two weeks and every gym was closed. Like (laughs) you couldn't get into like local rec fields to practice. You had, no one was, practicing with each other. We're a team sport. We're not in an individual sport. Like you have to have other people around. So it made it really, really difficult for us to be able to be like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to train? How am I going to prepare? Like are other countries getting locked down? Like all you think of all the crazy thoughts that go through your head. And we were just like, okay, just, we just got to do what we can. You know, if it's a throwing a tennis ball against the garage, if it's, you know, using a sock ball, we just got to figure it out. Like, just just stay in it. And as that tension kept building and building and then finally, like we could see that a lot of the Olympic athletes were starting to put pressure um, on the IOC Mm -hmm. and on the USOC and stuff, which makes sense because a lot of a lot of athletes hadn't actually qualified over 50% hadn't qualified for the 2020 games yet. Um, um, we were luck. We're the, the lucky percentage that had already qualified and were um, named to the team already. But a lot of people, a lot of athletes hadn't, and it would have been detrimental to a lot of people if they hadn't been able to train or get ready or even gotten sick. Um, but there, there's the caveat with that, that team USA has qualified a softball team. Mm-hmm. But the specific players themselves, um, that is still up in the air. So I guess tell us a little bit about, I guess, that dynamic and that psyche understanding that now there's an, an extra year. Now more players are getting put into the system. Some players are getting older. Some players, you know, knock on wood, everyone's OK, but might get hurt. What is that like? What does that feel like? And how how are you trying to personally navigate this weird waters that we've never really seen before? Yeah, you know, it, it. they are very weird waters. That's like a, a great way to say it because it, you're navigating the unknown. Um, you know, so many of us in the spring, we were amping up. And when they talk about the Olympics and they say it's not every year, it's every four years, but you, you prepare for it every single day. Um, you know, that that's true. That's a true statement. Like it's in the back of your mind and two years ago, three years ago, and you're planning and prepping not only yourself as an athlete, but a lot of a lot of pieces that are part of your life, um, personally and professionally on the field. So it is really difficult to kind of swallow that now you have to wait one more year to compete. And you have to also still keep yourself at such a high level to be ready, right? Like, it's not like you just take the day off and you're like, okay, the Olympics is next year. Like, no, like you still got to be out there training and, and working towards miniature, mini goals and big goals. And on top of that, finding ways to get games in and just be with a team all amidst this still COVID world that we're living in. So it's definitely a challenge to say the least um managing all of that and then also being able to manage okay can i push things back a year that i had planned um can i can i adjust this here can i move it forward how am i going to adjust not only as an athlete but as a you know everything else you do and that includes your professional life and your home life and your financial life and how can you uh, continue to prepare that for um, one more full year. Exactly. And that's why I'm, I, I love having these conversations. And again, appreciate having you on Monica Abbott of USA Softball. It's just that just because the Olympics are pushed back a year, there's still so much, as you said, for all of these athletes and, and really anyone involved in the games. It's not just like, oh, let me just pencil it in on my calendar. It's no, there's so, so, so much that goes into it. So I appreciate you coming on for a little bit to tell us about it. And I, what does that extra year do for you? I mean, is it 
you know, are you still very confident in making the team and getting to go to 2021 games? Yeah, you know, I feel really confident about um, making the team and and more so being a contributor for the team. But it's just like so much can happen within a year. It's really hard to like look. It, you want as a person to be able to like look ahead and say, you know, I'm going to be here. I'm going to do this. But in reality, like you really need to take a step back and just, you know, take each day and each opportunity as it comes because um, we just don't know in this world right now what's going to happen. And also just like, you know, how about like just staying healthy? Like that's important right now, <laughs> you know, like not only like physically, but mentally as well. And just making sure that you're prepared on all aspects, um, you know, preventing injury, preparing, preparing yourself um, with nutrition, all of those things that you maybe were easy, you had access to before that was easier has now become a challenge. Yes. And hopefully, as you said, everyone stays healthy. Nobody gets sick. Everyone, as you said, really good point. Mm -hmm. The mental, mental health too. I mean, staying inside, depending on who you are, where you live, what the state regulations are and what you can do is definitely very difficult. So we're excited yeah. and uh, we're, we're happy that, you know, hopefully everything will start to get back to whatever normal was or as close to it. And we can see you in action again. And we actually have had the opportunity to see you in action there. The new softball league that you were a part of, there was a few mm -hmm. games uh, recently within the month of July that this is us softball league. Um, you've also been in the national pro fast pitch league, which I'm sure we could rattle off all your accolades there, but that would make this interview about 20 yeah. times longer. So we don't need to go ahead. You can no, go and Google good. that everybody, <laughs> but um, tell us a little bit about, I mean, what was it like to finally get back on the team or get back on the field with the team and, and really be able to get back into playing, especially after such a long layoff? Well, I think the biggest thing with this is us, it was just like so important for everyone to just be back on the field um, to, to restart sports, basically, you know, what to have some sort of, opportunity to play some opportunity to bring the game to other people to watch um, and to show showcase the sport a little bit it was really important for us to do that because so so many of the youth athletes so many of the young players weren't having opportunities to do that and they it you know that's devastating for a lot of people that just do it do sports do softball on a regular basis and then just to be have it all taken out of your life cold turkey like that is really hard on really hard on people so we really believed in the hope that we were bringing um bringing to the sport bringing to young women bringing to um the softball community and the softball families uh so this is a softball was formed as a independent independent team and um that was a struggle within itself but we did everything we could um, and continuing to just champion for some just social issues as well as um, the sport, the sport as as well. Yes, there's a lot of great, um, great backing behind it. A lot of great messages that were gone through it. Um, there's a very interesting story. I don't think we need to dive too, too deep into it, but it's incredible what you ladies were able to do. As you said, restart sports, bring some great people to the forefront and really be able to bring sports back and start it up again and thankfully you got to get back on the field and we appreciate mm -hmm. that so monica this has been absolutely fantastic thank you so 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 much for your time monica abbott of usa softball silver medalist of the 2008 games and olympic hopeful for the 2021 tokyo games thank you so much monica yeah thank you